is that a any trade agreement is going to result in an enormous amount of changes in the economy, both directly on particular industries that may be liberalized or that have new have new access to foreign uh, markets, but also all of the suppliers to the the industries that are involved in consumers that are affected by this, workers that are affected by the changes in policy. And this is an enormously complicated uh, uh, set of changes that are important to understand before a government makes any assessment about whether or not this is a good idea or a bad idea. So a tool that is frequently used in the United States and in a, num and in a number of other jurisdictions is a so-called computable general equilibrium model, or CGE. Now, I can give only the barest of, of explanations of this in, in, a, uh, in a short video, but I want to give you a, a sense of what, this, what these models can and cannot do. Um, so first thing to keep in mind, it is a structural model in principle of the entire uh, economy. It's a general equilibrium model. You're talking about trying to model the supply and demand across the entire economy and the relationships between those different uh, parts of the economy. So it involves goods markets and factor or input markets for the entire economy. And again, they're looking uh, it has a structure to it so that you take into account the interrelationships of all these uh, different uh, parts of the economy. Now, what is it the CGE model is trying to do? It's trying to look at the impact of a change in one policy throughout all the different parts of the, uh, uh, of the domestic, uh, domestic economy. It is not, so it's, it's really, you should think of it is a simulation of the effects of a policy change. It is not a forecast. Okay, why do I put a stir by this? Um, now, I'll discuss a little bit more about this in, in a moment, but it's ultimately looking at the effect of, a, of one small change on the economy going throughout all the different aspects. So it's looking at the marginal effect of that one policy change. Now, if you're trying to forecast what the U.S. economy is going to be like in five years or ten years or twenty years as a consequence of a an agreement like the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So you change the trade policy and then you go forward 15, 20 years. Well, you know, there are a lot of other things that are changing, not just that one policy change. There are there's demographic changes, there's investment, there's technology, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So you should not think, and even though this is Often, by policymakers and the press and, and uh, analysts, they will talk about a CGE model as a forecast. It's not. It's truly, truly not. That's, that's the wrong way to think about it. What it essentially is going to be is what the economy would look like at a particular time if a different set of policies were in place. It is a counterfactual. It's the world as if this other policy were to be in place. Now, that's not the same thing as a forecast. Now, let's talk a little bit more about what, what the process is to uh, 
undertake one of the CG models. And I should note that this is a this is a very specialized task, and not not many people uh, do this because it's so it's so complicated. Again, model the entire economy. So the first thing is that uh, what a modeler would do is to uh, create a structural model of the economy. Now what do I mean by that? That means you're looking at the, uh, the, the way in which consumers and producers interact. It's looking at the sensitivity of uh, in general of uh, consumers to price changes. It's looking at the you know how sensitive consumers are to a uh, foreign uh, the price of a foreign product. So you're, you're building up these all these different relationships you know what types of inputs go into uh, uh, final uh, into intermediate production and then into final production. So it should be no surprise that a critical part of a CGE is the input-output table of a particular country. So it's, because the input-output table is, is relating the inputs in the production process, the amount of capital, the amount of skilled labor, the unskilled labor, the land, these primary factors, along with all the intermediate inputs that go into the final, the final production. So this is, you know, one of the major uh, features of this structural model. A modeler will then select a base year. A base year where they've got good information about the quantity produced across the entire across the entire economy, consumption and imports, all these different um, uh, factors. They've got this base year with data, okay, with data. So you have a structure, you've got data, and then you will calibrate the model this structural model to fit the data. Basically assuming that you've got an equilibrium, supply equal demand across all markets, and the, the word calibrate means that they try to figure out what various parameters need to be in order to create supply equal to demand given the, the structural model of the economy. Now, in that structural model, there are often assumptions about elasticities, elasticity of substitution between different inputs, the elasticity of demand when, when price changes, the elasticity of, of supply with respect to price, a bunch of elasticities. Now, that data is pulled from econometric studies, from you know, studies from other places, that's then used with the structural model and the data to, to calibrate the model. And the, the, this modeling, this calibration effort, is essentially to find the value of other parameters that would create, recreate the whole base year economic snapshot. Okay, so here you've got this model of the economy, all these different relationships, Data fits uh, the the modeling uh, the, the model and the parameters fit the data. Okay, so that's your your calibration exercise. And then you look at a counter factual. You change a policy. You eliminate imports on a sector. You have a free trade agreement with a with a particular country with various uh, uh, attributes. You look at the effect of in a domestic context putting 
a consumption tax instead of an income tax. You, you change a single policy and then you recalibrate, if you will. You look at what this base year would have looked like if this counterfactual policy had been in place. So it's really kind of a made-up world, a parallel universe, what the economy would have looked like if this alternative policy were in place. Now this is why I don't say it, uh, I really emphasize it's not a forecast, because it's saying, okay, here's this year, and if we had a different set of policies, this is what this year would have looked like. It's not looking at what the model, what the economy is going to be looking like in, in five or ten years because it's looking at that, at that base year. Now, there are a number of important features of the CGE model which make it particularly attractive to, a, uh, to an economic analyst. One is that it identifies resource reallocations. Okay, that's a fancy way of saying that you can look at what industries expand and what industries contract, and what happens to employment in different sectors. So it, it really gives you a sense of what the, you know, given all this, this structure that you put onto the, the model, you know, what happens to the, uh, the, the automobile industry and the auto supplier if you have, have a free trade agreement with Japan. And, for that matter, what happens to retail services of people that are involved in supplying services to the automobile market? For that matter, it also looks at the impact on various other parts of the economy because automobiles are cheaper. So it's this you know, really rich set of, of, uh, of results that allow you to compare this across uh, different sectors. So it's really important for looking at resource reallocations. What ex uh, sectors expand, what sectors contract. It also identifies a static change in the level of GDP. You would look at you know, what the GDP would have been if this, poli this, uh, this alternative policy was plus. That's not talking about economic growth, this ongoing change over time, but instead looks at the level of, the, uh, um, of, of GDP. Now, a lot of people will try and use this for, I mean, non-specialists non will try and use this as a sense of the economic growth it's not, it's really not. It's a static, static level. Now, what people often care about is what does it tell you about the unemployment rate? What happens to jobs in the economy as a whole? And this is where a standard CGE model is really not very good. The standard approach is to assume a fixed level of, out, uh, of labor in the economy and then look at how that labor is reallocated. It doesn't have in it a, uh, a supply response on, uh, for labor uh, at the economy-wide level. They keep that fixed. Now that's, that's in part because everything can't be determined within the model. You have to have, you fix some things. And so what is a typical thing that they do is they keep the level of employment fixed, let employment change in different sectors, and then let the wage change in order to get back at, at, to recreate that overall level of employment. So the, the adjustment is usually at the sectoral level and at the, the price of labor or the, or the wage. So these are the things that it's really uh, particularly, uh, particularly good at. Um, the, the downsides of CGE models are 
really that it, they're very very complicated to uh, uh, to run. It, this requires a, a significant amount of, of expertise to, to be able to do this well. And there's a lot of art uh, and not just science involved with this. It's um, it's really a specialized uh, uh, part of, of of economics. Now, when is this used in the U.S.? It's uh, it where uh, probably the most uh, important place where this um, is used is at the U.S. International Trade Commission when analyzing the impact of trade uh, pol uh, trade changes, trade policy changes on the U.S. economy. The Congress will mandate that the ITC look at that so they will know what the impact on the U.S. economy is before they enter into a new FTA, for example. So if you go to the U.S. ITC's website, you will see a number of studies their CGE models that use this approach in order to answer questions to the best of our ability about the impact of a policy change on the economy as a whole. And for that, especially the reallocation, really useful. Forecasting, not so good. Economic growth uh, forecast, not so good. Overall employment rate, not so good. It's really best used for the reallocation of, uh, of resources.